Hello everybody, this is Steve Downs, one of the team of developers working on Changeman ZMF here at Serena Software. I'd like to show you how easy it is to get started with the new high-level language exit points implemented in version 8 of the product. I guess I should point out that there's a getting started guide manual um, and we can see it in front of us just now uh, and amongst Lots of details about all the different exits. There is an introduction, including a getting started checklist, um, which will become very useful when you start implementing this stuff. Okay, so how do we get going? So, um, when you start ZMF version 8 for the first time, there will be no HLL exits active, and so it will not attempt to start the HLLX started task. We have to do a little bit of admin to let ZMF know what it is we want to do with HLLX. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'll be looking at an exit in the build functional area, that is, uh, those taken during stage, recompile, relink. Uh, and so, first of all, let's go to a ZMF session and uh, get into the admin for HLLX. So it's A for admin, G global. And option 8 is for HLL exit admin. This list will uh, increase as we add more support for various functional areas. Uh, 810GA, we have build, package create, and package update. So we're looking at build, option 2. Uh, at the top of every panel, you'll see an option to put in the name of the HLX started task procedure. Uh, you must do that first. You can do it and forget about it because unless you change it, that's it done. So the one we're using is SIRD HLL1. The rest of it is all about defining the exits to ZMF. Uh, by default, they're all defined as inactive. None of these exits are active at the moment. There are exit points available which are taken both before and after most of the panels or windows in the user interface. And these are all listed in the Getting Started Guide. Each exit point has an internal name by which ZMF knows it. Um, for the build function, they all begin with BULD and then followed by a numbering scheme. Uh, the exit points I want to look at today uh, are before and after the job submission panel. So the before exit has an internal name of BULD0004. So let's locate that one. BULD0004. As we can see, like all the others, are currently defined as inactive. So ZMF knows it by the name BULD0004, but we are going to um, make it execute a Rex exec called try it out. So if we fill in the name of the Rex exec, we tell ZMF that it is active. We also need to tell it whether it's LE or Rex, and they're all defined as Rex by default. And that's all we need to do for this one particular exit. So if we PF3 out of there, that information is then written to the package master. Currently, there is not an HLX started task running. So to get one up and running, you could stop and start the ZMF started task. And when ZMF comes up, if it sees any active exit definition in the package master, it will start the HLX started task to service that exit. But as we already have the ZMS started task up and running, we can ask it to start up HLX in flight using a modify command. So let's go do that. And a modify command is F space, the name of the ZMS started task. It's a CMN command and we want to attach the HLX facility. So there we go. And that uh, issues the start command for the uh, started task that's going to service our HLL exits. Um, and it will come up and it will tell you the names of all the exits that are currently active. And here's that. There's our one exit that's active. OK. OK, so we're up and running, but we don't yet have an exit called to try it out to execute. There are several sample exits to get you going in the samples distribution library. So let's, let's go look at them. So here's a list of my uh, copy of the distribution libraries, and the samples library is there. The, I happen to, there are many 
HLLX exit samples, COBOL, PL1 and REX. Um, some of them are there just to show you the kind of information that is passed to the exit. There are full details in the Getting Started Guide of this, by the way. Um, uh, let's use uh, a REX exec which does this for the build function. It's called HXR BLDA. Somewhere down here, HXR BLDA. There we go. Uh, it contains a lot of displays of fields that are actually passed to the exit. Usually your exits are going to want to run silent, but as you develop and debug them, you will want them to be a bit more verbose, such as this one is. So this one basically contains lots of says for all the different fields that are being passed to this exit point. Okay, we need to take this sample and put it in the exec library um, where it will be executed from. And in my case, that is cmndev.rex.exec and we want to call it try it out because that's what we defined it as. So there it is, it's created and it's now ready to be executed. As mentioned earlier, this is the before job submission panel exit. So in order to drive this exit, we need to submit a stage job. So let's go back and do that. So we're going to find a package in which there uh, is a component we want to stage. And let's go with that one. So the before exit will have been taken as we entered this panel, so before this panel. So let's go and have a look at, uh, at what was produced, because we put lots of displays in the exit. So if we come out of here and go and have a look at the output in the started task for HLX, there it is. And you can see that all these displays have come out showing you uh, what's actually been passed to the exit, the sort of information you can base your decisions on within the exit. If a field is not available or has no value at this point, then it will be passed as null. Uh, the majority of these fields are available to be updated by the exit as well. Uh, the exit can make use of any service it can get to, such as uh, calling ZMF XML services or connections to DB2 or any other external process which could be driven by the, by the Rex or, or an LE language. In general terms, you'll probably use the before exit to present suggested values to the developer and the after exit to validate what had been passed back by the developer. You could also notify external processes at any point in these exits. So, okay, let's actually put in place an exit now which will do something useful. I've prepared a Rex exec called BLD job CD, build job card. Uh, so if we go back to our Rex library and have a quick look at that. The code is written to be taken by both the before job submission exit, which is BULD0004, and the after exit, which is BULD0104. So if we have a look a bit further down in the code, you can see that there's conditional code in here. So if the function passed is, is the before exit, then we do this. Well, first of all, we show that the job card that's that would have been displayed had this exit not intervened. So the job card on entry to the exit. Um, we then put together a model job card, which will be displayed by the panel to the developer. So we're suggesting the job name, the account code, execution, and message classes. Uh, uh, if the exit is being taken for the after exit, function code is BULD0104, then we now validate what's been passed to us. So the, the developer will have had a chance to update the job card, should they wish, and they're now passed, they pressed enter on that panel, and we're now in the after exit and uh, we validate the job card and in particular we're looking for an account code that starts with x17 uh, if that doesn't pass muster then we set our own uh, error message and uh, respond back that we don't want the process to continue uh, another extra bit here if the build procedure is set to cmnasm then we force the display of the extended user options. 
Okay, simple enough. Now to get it working, we need to go back to HLX admin. Go back to admin, global, HLX, and build. And if we locate build 0004 again, this time we're going to change the name to our new exec, build job card. Uh, Build job card, and we also want to activate the after exit. So, taking the same exec build job card, active yes, and we save those away. Um, that's all been written to the package master. We now need to refresh the definitions with which HLX started task is working. There are three ways to do this progressively less invasive you could stop and start the started the zms started task and the new definition we picked up on startup you could detach and then reattach the hlx facility within the running zms started task but more likely you're going to want to issue the modify command which will reload the active exit definitions dynamically there's no real reason why you do anything other than the dynamic reload generally, but I mentioned the other two just to be clear that the new definitions will always be picked up by a restart. Okay, so let's issue that command and get this new exit regime activated. It's issued to the, all commands are issued to the ZMF started task. So it's F U A ten G A comma C M N comma reload reload H L L X and there it tells us there's our new definitions, the old one we already had active, but we're now executing a different exec, and now we have an extra exit, the after exit, which is executing the same exec. Okay, now we can drive them. So to do that, we need to again stage a component in a package. Use the same one. Stage. Okay, so now at this point, we've driven the before exit. Uh, and we can have a look at the output from that exit, which will show the job card as it was before the exit made, it, made a change to it. So here we go. It says on entry to the to submission panel, the job cards look like this. That that was what the job cards were before the exit got control. But as you can see, the exit has changed the job card to the model job card, as we'd expected it to do. Now let's violate our account code rule. So we require the account code to begin at x17. Let's just change it to something else. Uh, hit enter for a submission and we get the error message invalid account with the long message as uh, as written in the Rex exec we saw earlier. And just to finish up to show how easy we can change the way the exit works, we go back to the exit and put something different for the, the error message. For example, We can save that, and every time the particular function, in this case build, is uh, restarted, it will pick up the latest version of the exit that's been active. So if we come out of here and restart the build function, so stage, And again, we put something invalid in there, such as that. We'll get the same problem, but the message has changed. As you can see, we've changed the message. It's as simple as that. Okay, that's about it for this demonstration. Note that for 810, uh, we implemented exits in the package create, package update, and build functional areas. At 811, it is intended to cover the majority of the other common functional areas. But if you need something that we've not supplied, then just let us know and we'll put it on the list. Thanks very much for watching.